Aloha, I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome to Sister Power. Our guest, retired Judge Sandra Sims, award-winning international artist here. We have the owner of Strange Fruit Express and fine arts photographer, Pamela Mathis. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you, Aloha. Sharon. Thank you for having us. Ladies, before we move forward to discuss films and photography, uh, we're going to dedicate this show to our beloved friend, the artist John Nichols, who passed away yesterday. And he was one of the co-founders of the Honolulu African American Film Festival. So our hearts and prayers go out to John Nichols' family. And, and the film fest, we're, we're just heartbroken with the loss of our brilliant, brilliant yeah. friend. Yeah, you know, so Sandra and I, you've been we're working with him for- um, 30 oh, years. There it is. There it, ooh, Lord, I thought I was 35. Okay. Oh yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. I, it's actually, I was five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, we've so, been- let's, let's talk about the Honolulu African-American Film Festival uh, Sandra, let's talk about the opening night film. Well, I'm real excited. I've been on the uh, film festival committee since its inception, along with John and Faye. And this is our 11th year. And usually how we usually begin the festival is with, you know, some really exciting moving film that everyone wants to see. Of course, you want to see all of them. And then we have a wonderful reception with music and dancing and so forth before. We're not dancing always, but so this film that we're showing this time is, is Lowndes County. And it's a film that was done in the 1960s and it was Lowndes County and the Road to Black Power. This is a really, really different perspective on looking at Black Power and the civil rights movement. Uh, it is a documentary and it was filmed during the 1960s following the passage of the Voting Rights Act. And people thought, oh, we passed the Voting Rights Act, everything is cool. We can all go vote. But there was this particular county in Alabama that was 95% Black or something like that. Nobody in that community was registered to vote. Nobody. And so this group following, it was a part of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Stokely Carmichael and those folks, um, actually, I personally remember this. I'm old enough to do that, but uh, went there for the purpose of registering these folks and the stuff that they went through just to get folks registered. You can't even begin to comprehend how awful it was and what they went what they went through to get folks registered to vote. It is heart wrenching. It is a side of civil rights that you don't see. We see Martin Luther King marching across the Pettus Bridge and we see, you know, the march on Washington, but you don't see these people hiding in a, in a, in a, in a, in a cabin in the middle of the night, armed, waiting for people to come and shoot them because they don't want them to vote. That's what we're talking about. It is so powerful and it is so illuminating and helps us understand what led to the Black Power Movement. Because this is sort of, you know, we say, you know, we're nonviolent, but they had to decide we, we're not going to be nonviolent if we don't have to be. And that's what happened in this film. It is so powerful. And I think it is an important film for us to be looking at in these times to see the kinds of things that we have to still, well, we're not going through anything quite that bad. Although maybe it's, it's getting a little uglier now than it has been. But I think it's a powerful, important film that... Um, and it was just done last year. It's a new. It's new, in the sense of it being made new. But it it talks about an event that took place in the 1960s after the passage of the Voting Rights Act. It is powerful. You must see it. February the second. Get your tan. It'll also be shown again. There's a couple. It's going to be shown on three different occasions. But the opening reception is on that Thursday, February the second, and there'll be uh, food and there'll be. Uh, uh, entertainment prior to it. You don't have to attend the reception. You can just get tickets for the film. The film starts at 7.30, but the reception and all the all the fun stuff starts at 6. 
So you got to go online to do it. I, we do expect that it will sell out um, probably in a couple of weeks, maybe by next week. So I'd suggest you do it now. Yeah, yeah. We are we always have sold out events. And, and moving along, Sequoia, let's talk about blurring the color lines documentary that would take place. And you and I are doing an event after that. But t yes, let's talk about blurring the color line. Well, Crystal Kwok is the filmmaker of this extraordinary, interesting um, less known story of Asian Americans and African Americans and Jim Crow South. So uh, Georgia in her case, and uh, she unpacks um, those relations between African Americans and Asian Americans, uh, good, bad, and ugly. So she is being unapologetic in her approach to uh, discussing topics that need to be spoken of and expanding it beyond just Georgia, but She's traveled all over the globe, just returned from Hong Kong and all these film festivals and won awards along the way from Harlem to Hong Kong. And she's finding that this anti-Blackness is uh, a global thing and including Honolulu. So we're unpacking it through our interesting community building project called um, uh, From Blurring the Color Lines and Breaking Racial Barriers. It's a discussion panel with uh, entertainment and tasting of Afro-Asian fusion kind of food, a signature cocktail, swag bags. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're, our title sponsor is the Asian American Foundation. Mahalo Nui Loa for that gracious um, uh, support of our uh, what we're trying to, uh, to show here. And I uh, can't wait to perform with Kenny Endo Taiko drummer and Masu Ban Bangara, what's his name? Bangora, yes. yeah. Bangora, excuse me. And so we're going to collaborate and create a little trio of fun of Afro Asian style. And uh, we also have a great photographer here that will be joining us at that event as well. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. And that is going awesome. to take place on uh, February the 9th. But we're going to switch gears just a little bit and speak with our uh, fine arts photographer. Your artwork, Pamela, is absolutely beautiful. How do you capture it through the lens? Well, I just to give a bit of background, uh, I'm um, originally from New York. Um, uh, one of the um, I had the extraordinary um, uh, opportunity to work for a film uh, post-production house where we uh, did the main and end title post-production for motion pictures. So when you guys talk about short films or full featured films, you know, it's something that I'm very familiar with. Um, I used to go to premieres. Uh, we were, uh, my post-production house, we created we, all of Woody Allen Mo, uh, the main and end titles. And uh, okay. you can also see a, a few of my end titles because that's what I was responsible for. Uh, you know, uh, the, the crawl, as they say, uh, that's what I was responsible for. Okay. okay. In addition to that, um, I, uh, I assisted uh, a few photographers, uh, still photographers on motion pictures, which kind of enhanced my curiosity about photography. And so uh, when I uh, moved to Hawaii, uh, I moved to Molokai. And that is really a magical place. It is. <laughs> I, was, I intended on being there for about a year and I, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm on another island, but you know, my photography uh, from Molokai mainly uh is just i mean the, the 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 pictures are just breathtaking yeah the subject um, mostly, is is breathtaking thank you mostly landscapes um because a lot of the uh, i wanted to go in actually doing uh yeah that 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 photo right wow there, yeah it yeah. was uh taken you know not uh, just not far from the wharf which is one of the which is the main pier where they get all their freight uh, uh, 
uh, produce and, and, and so forth. But uh, that that's a magical place. It's, it's a very special place. And um, I found out about, about that particular place by just driving. And I was just about to do a U-turn and I there found this beautiful place. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, oh my God. And yeah, yeah, it's a lot of places like that in Molokai. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, your, your work is just, and we'll see more of your work and, uh, and our engineer, Think Tech engineer will you know put them up. But very quickly, I, I asked Pamela, I said, well, tell me a little bit more about your work. And she said, have you heard of Black Girls Rock? <laughs> I was a photographer. I said, have I heard of Black Girls Rock? Absolutely, <laughs> that's big time. She's so humble. Very, right. very humble. Uh, I say the one where Michelle Obama was was um, <laughs> presented, or Jada Pickett Smith. But anyway, right. we'll come back there and talk more with you. And we're going to get now. We're going to switch gears back to Sandra, and let's talk about uh, the invitation. Well, one of the more we've got so many great films and so many good documentaries that are going to be a part of this festival. It was really hard making a selection. But <laughs> I'm a longtime member of the Lynx Incorporated, and we have a Hawaii chapter here that's been on, on the island since 1986. And last year, the Lynx Incorporated, the national organization, which is an organization of, of primarily African-American women across the country and in London and in the Bahamas, about 17,000 women who uh, pro provide and do service and our friendship projects within their communities. Um, the women who are a part of this organization are, you know, leaders in their own right and, and are some amazing women, period. So for the 75th anniversary of the Lynx Incorporated, a documentary was produced about the history of the organization called The Invitation. It's called The Invitation because membership in the Lynx is by invitation. And so it kind of chronicles that history of the founders of the organization and bringing us up to, you know, the transitions that the organization made, particularly early on in the, in the 1940s and 50s, where it was, you know, bridging the gap and helping along in the, in the development of rights for, for uh, folks of color, working in the communities, advancing education, advancing the arts. Uh, and that's kind of where the focus has always been in education, arts, national pro projects, and the film kind of chronicles that growth and up to the point where we are now. And so it's, uh, we've got a really, one of the, one of the narrators is uh, Simone Sanders, who is on uh, CNN. And of course she is a member of the Lynx Incorporated. And we have a shout out to our vice president, uh, Lynn Kamala Harris, who is a member of the Lynx Incorporated. So we got, I mean, you don't have to be, you know, a CNN broadcaster or vice president to be a member, but you know, we've, there's some people that are doing some amazing things and women and it's and, and, and black women who are doing these amazing things, much like what you're talking about, Pam, when you talk about the, you know, black girls rock women, just, I think there's this, I think what we'll be doing in that segment for that day that we're showing those films, it's kind of looking at what uh, black women in this country are doing. There's another wonderful film that's being shown that day that's produced by a young um, uh, 18 year old who lives here. Um, she has produced a film and we're gonna be showing her short as well. And then Sequoia, hopefully you'll be there with the film with the uh, dancers. Yes. Uh, there's an incredibly line. beautiful yeah. piece. Yeah. It's short, but it's, oh my God. I, I think when we watched it to screen, we all just kind of sat there like, whoa, it's Nina Simone singing and women dancing. I mean, you can, okay, I, that's all I need to say. And you can just visualize what that is like. You know, yeah. women, Four women, yeah. Four women. So that's that. I'm gonna move okay. on, but that's that's. It's gonna be an exciting afternoon. We'll have some folks from our chapter, Y chapter, links talk about the work that links are doing here in Hawaii, and then you'll get to see just what black women are doing in this country. Dang it! Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love how she just slipped in Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, come on, come on, y'all. <laughs> Stacey Adams, she's also a member of Lynx. Uh, many of the women who are in Congress, um, in fact, most of them, if I recall correctly, are members of the of the Lynx as well. 
So we're making this impact all over. Yeah. yeah. Well, you Sequoia, how is Strange Fruit Express contributing to the Honolulu African American Film Festival this year? I will be I'm graciously, graciously happy to be a part of this uh, event. And I will be sharing a, a dance piece uh, that's inspired by Afro-Asian relations. Uh, uh, it's connected to the Blurry and the Color Lines film by Crystal Clock, mm -hmm. an event on February 9th at the Pacific Club. Uh, and I will be having an accompaniment by Ms. Sharon Kamashar Blow. We're going to be doing an interpretation of The Human Family by Maya Angelou. So wonderful, it's going to be a wonderful, sounds wonderful way to express the movement and uh, poetry, uh, our theme. Yeah, uh, about being more alike than unalike. We are, we are more alike than unalike. So, Pamela, how is P Pamela Mathis photography? How are you contributing to the film festival this year? Well, I'd like to um, uh, to show a few pieces, if I may, um, and uh, you know, just introduce some of my work. Um, especially, you know, a lot of people, you know, they just, you know, they come here to this island, or they'll go to Maui, but you know, they don't think about a place like Molokai. You know, to just go there and look at the different flowers. And, wow. you know, it's your work just, is stunning. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a place where, like, for instance, they, uh, they grow, uh, which they probably do on this island as well. I just haven't seen it yet. But, you know, eucalyptus trees, you know, something that we go and buy, right? In Molokai, it grows, you know, wild. You know, you, you can have fresh eucalyptus in your apartment, you know, forever because it's just, it's just wild. You know, um, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. And also Pamela is the, will be the photographer um, that night for Sisters in Paring Hawaii. So not only February the 2nd, she would be taking fabulous pictures of our opening night reception. She's also the photographer for Blurring the Color Line, um, the documentary, but our opening recep uh, reception uh, will Breaking Racial Barriers panel discussion and tasting event. And for that event, I want to let people know it's at the Plaza Club. No, Pacific Club. No, Pacific Club. Sorry, you're right. It's at the Pacific Club. Thank you. <laughs> we have people going to the wrong place. <laughs> no, no, no. So let me just read it here. Sponsored by the Asian American Foundation, the Pacific Club, February the 9th, 2023, 5 to 8 p.m. Delicious historical relevant food prepared by Chef Eric at the Pacific Club. Signature cocktails. Opportunity to network with decision makers. We're going to have some fabulous artwork that will be shown on the Lanai, which Pamela is a part of that. And Kenny Endo, we have Musa from the Sarafara, also Sandra, there are the, he's gonna be performing for us at the opening night reception. Right, right, yeah, yes. yeah I forgot to mention. What a yes. treat, wow. Gonna be, yeah. gonna be nice. And, all and you know, is another thing about that film is, you know, Crystal's, that film is about her family. So it isn't just, yeah. you know, going in interviewing folks. These are her, these are her grandparents yeah. that she's doing the interviewing and, and talking with and the people that lived and worked with her grandparents. So it's, and her it's unpacking real. unpacking some things oh, that yeah. I mean, secrets, yeah. you oh, know, yeah. that open oh, up yeah. a whole oh, other yeah. world. And mm -hmm. her trajectory changed because of, because of that. And it turned into a whole community building project. So it's just yeah. fascinating. So it's, but, you there's know, you that personal in your history, aspect. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, even more so. There's yeah. that personal piece to it, not just someone yeah. popping into town and, you know, yes. but she's yeah. she lived it. And they shared stuff with her that's just, oof. Yeah. Well, Sharon and I, Sisters in Power in Hawaii and Strange Fruit Express are very happy to uh, yeah. present 
this uh, event to the public and I'm really excited. And the people who will attend this event on Thursday, February the 9th, our goal and mission, we build bridges, not walls. Yes. And it's a time for all ethnic backgrounds to come together as one and yes. freely speak about your experiences. So again, let's, let's talk about the Honolulu African American Film Festival. We've got so many fabulous films. We have on the line, the Richard Williams story. You wanna talk a little bit about that, Sandra? This, this film, the Richard Williams story is, is again, the, he's of course the father of v Venus and uh, Serena Williams. And many of you saw the film that uh, Will Smith starred in, you know, telling his story, which is a, you know, which is a, which is a, film and it's based on his life and he certainly had a hand in it but this particular Will Richard Williams story is Richard Williams himself telling his story and it is so it's 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 from and that's not to discredit anything else but for him to talk about himself what it took to get his what it took to get him to the place where he could be such a powerful advocate for his daughters uh, to get them to the place where they are Venus and Serena. And that's all you have to say. You don't have to tell their last name. You have to just say Venus and Serena and the whole dang world knows who you're talking about. This is the man that, <laughs> and this is his story of how he did that. And I think it's a, it's just a powerful piece. It's an enlightening piece. It, and of course, obviously it wasn't easy. Um, I mean, I remember when they first came on the scene. I guess I'm old enough to remember these things. Yeah, the braids. <laughs> you know. The braids. Huh? With the, the bees and braids, and people just thought, you know, they were, you know, now everybody's like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to, I want a body like Serena. I want my hair. I want to do whatever, I, you know. But in those days, it was not. I mean, people were were cruel. They still, well, still we have a crown act. Today, huh? because we have a, the Crown Act today, because of that kind of bullying, right? The Crown Act, yeah, with our hair speaks to that. With yeah. Our hair, yeah. so it speaks to that. Well, we want to just refresh everyone to let people know that February the second through February the twenty sixth, the Honolulu African American Film Festival will be at the Dorks Duke Theater. Mm -hmm. And this is something you do not want to miss at all. You know, so very quickly, Pamela, what type of festivals have you attended during your career? Um, not too many, actually. Um, I went to when I lived on Molokai, I came to a festival here. Uh, it was uh, 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 to do, uh, uh, I believe, Miles Davis. There was a festival uh, for Miles Davis. Uh, well, he was featured in one of the uh, uh, films. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm going back a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's something that you mentioned, Miles Davis. Our dear friend, John Henry Lewis, we featured Miles Davis' film years ago. John Nichols, John Henry Nichols, met Miles Davis and painted him. So I, I did, I interviewed John on that before um, before the film. So that, that's very riv riveting. So again, we want to also talk about Let's, let's do a recap, um, Sequoia and Pamela, that we're going to start with. And um, I'm sure that we'll see Sandra will be coming in momentarily. So our recap for the Honolulu African American Film Festival, we're just giving everyone a sneak peek. Yeah. So we have 16 films. And, and one that I would like people to remember is called The Inspection. And Gabrielle Union is in that film. And it is just another riveting film um, in Elegance Brapton's deeply moving film inspired by his own story, a young gay black man rejected by his mother. And, you know, just think that is happening now. If we can just accept people to be who you are, 
This is what's important. And Sequoia, let's talk again about blurring the color line, our breaking um, barriers, uh, breaking racial barriers, panel discussion, and tasting event. Sure. Well, it's, you know, attached to the African American Film Festival and Mahalo Lui Loa for that. Thank you so much for uh, bringing us in to share the story, a very important story and topic. Uh, and I mean, just the film festival as a whole, the spectrum, there's so many different narratives, everyone telling and speaking their truth unapologetically. And uh, it's just important to be able to have that space and to show, show up and be unified and, and proud in that. So I'm happy to be a part of this and opening up, unpacking relations between Asian and African Americans, AAPI, and kind of going there with like, what we speak about amongst ourselves, right? And what we experience, you know, it is the land of aloha sometimes, depends. <laughs> so uh, we're in the color line February 9th. This will be at the Pacific Club uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. This is not really a pity party. This is a celebration of our, our wonderful differences uh, through panel discussions, tastings, Afro-Asian fusion, uh, signature cocktails, entertainment, the same kind of uh, vibe of Afro-Asian unity. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and just talking about it and just being critically analyzing and, and being mindful of one another and supporting one another. Yeah, it, and I might add, we did, we did not have the opportunity to speak about our guest speakers. Yes, so I'll let you start that. Okay, so the director, Crystal Kwok, will share clips and engage honest conversations about African-American and Asian-Americans. And our guest speaker um, is Alma Groki. She's a Rear Admiral U.S. Navy, she's retired. And then our very own civil rights attorney, Andre Wooten. So they are going to rock it, there it is. I tell you our engineers that uh, Think Tech is always on it, I'm loving it. Love that. So yes. it, 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 just this is the place to be. And I would like to add, we have Family Sunday at the film festival. We want people to know that February the 19th at 2 p.m., we want you to, it's free, walk in. Family Sunday, Aquila and the B. Oh, it's a great film. So fun. It's a classic. It's a classic. And so that with that being said, uh, Pamela, is there anything else you want us to know about your artwork and what you're doing in your next venture? Well, I had, uh, there's this one uh, uh, picture that I did just recently at Point Panic right here in Kaka'ako. And it's, it's, it's a, um, it's a, a picture where it looks as if I'm underwater with the surfer. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's just phenomenal. You know, the surfer is actually underwater <laughs> and you can actually see him holding his breath. You see him on the board like that, a nice action move. And you see the bubbles coming out, you know, just holding his breath and the bubbles are coming out of his mouth. What I wanted with that particular photo, I wanted to show the artistry with, with between the surfer and the water because the surfers, they don't just go out into the water. It's, you know, it's a skill. And so, I wanted to show how the surfer is one with the water. Okay. So as a photographer, I was, uh, the, 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 the surfer was one with, with the water and the waves, and I was with one with the surfer. Oh, All beautiful. right, that's beautiful. You know, in closing, I want to thank Judge Sandra Sims, Sequoia Carr Brown, our award-winning dancer, international, and our this fine woman. Arts, <laughs> uh, our fine arts photography for Pamela, 
Mathis for sharing your wisdom. And on behalf of Think Tech Hawaii and Sister Power, thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.